Hi everyone. Um, I'm Guan Yuzhu from IBM Research. Today I'm talking. I'm going to talk about a collaborative work um, with my colleagues at IBM on uh, topological and subsistent codes uh, on low degree graphs with flat qubits. So the result w was recently published on PIX. So the motivation um, of this work. Uh, was partially discussed by uh, Jerry's talk, uh, which I also recorded. Um, so here we consider some um, superconducting qubit architectures. For example, the, the one used cross resonance gate to implement two qubit gates. So in this kind of architecture, uh, neighboring qubit must have um, uh, different frequencies. However, due to the um, fabrication process, there are always some imperfection in the frequency assignments, which will result in frequency collisions. So uh, the fewer frequencies that uh, uh, must be chosen, that will uh, lead to a higher success rate during the fabrication process. Also, in general, the lower um, the crosstalk errors uh, there will be. So, so this motivates uh, designing topological and subsystem codes on low degree graphs, uh, which uh, will have uh, lower frequency collisions. Uh, so, just to um, uh, briefly uh, introduce the idea, so here we have qubits put on the vertices of a graph, and uh, for this mid middle qubit has a, a degree four connection. To reduce the uh, degree, we can split a single vertex into two, so they will both become degree three. We can further put another vertex in the middle, which will have only degree two connection. So this uh, motivates the um, building of the uh, uh, IBM 53 qubit Rochester device, which is put on a so-called heavy hexagon lattice, where the uh, qubits are put on both the vertex and the edge of the uh, hexagons. So we have designed a so-called heavy hex code, uh, which uh, perfectly fits on this type of device, uh, where you put uh, both um, um, uh, data and ancilla qubits uh, uh, on this um, lattice. So uh, we, we deform the shape of the lattice into a square shape, just uh, for convenience. And here the yellow ones are the data qubits, and the black and uh, white ones are the ancilla qubits. Also, we show uh, the C0 gates uh, applied uh, uh, on this code, and also the scheduling of these gates. So just to uh, introduce the code in more details, uh, the heavy hex code is uh, a subsystem code, so it has um, gauge operators. In the bulk, there are basically two types. One is a four-body X uh, gauge operator. The other is a two-body Z uh, gauge operator. Uh, so to measure the four-body X uh, gauge operator, we uh, use three um, ancilla qubits in the middle. The black one is the usual uh, measurement uh, syndrome qubit, uh, which will read out the value of the gauge operator. Uh, so the white ones we call flat qubits, they have two uses. One is to uh, in, uh, mediate the entanglement between the data and the measurement qubits. Uh, the other is that it can also significantly reduce the logical error rates as we as we will discuss later. Uh, so we can see a single poly X will be propagated by the circuit uh, to um, four uh, X on the data qubits, such that it entangle uh, all the data qubits with the measurement qubit. And then through measuring the value of the measurement qubit, you can read out the um, value of the gauge operator. So similarly, there is a circuit to measure the two body Z, Z, Z uh, gauge operator. So they have to be done sequentially, such that the, uh, the whole measurement circuit costs uh, 11 time steps. And so uh, since it's a um, subsequent coil, it also has um, uh, stabilizers. So there are two types in the bulk. One is a two column strip of X operators, which is basically a product of the four body X uh, gauge operators. So, so they are essentially the same as the stabilizer in, in the Bacon Shaw code. Uh, so we give it a, na a nickname as bacon strip. So the other type is a four-body Z stabilizer, which is basically the product of two two-body uh, Z gauge operators. And uh, also there are boundary uh, two-body Z stabilizers. So the Z part is like a, a surface code. So essentially, um, the 
This heavy hex code is a hybrid of surface and bacon shell code. Um, so we also introduced another uh, type of code and, uh, called the heavy square surface code where the uh, both the uh, data and ancilla qubits are put on, uh, on the heavy square lattice where uh, the, uh, there are qubits on both the vertices and edges of a square lattice. So it has a, uh, uh, a hybridization of a degree four and a degree two. So it has lower uh, degrees than the standard surface code. And the, the, the stabilizer is the same and the measurement uh, circuit is same as the gauge op four body gauge operator in the heavy hex code. And then you have the same similar for the X and Z parts. And the whole depth of the circuit is 14 time steps uh, as opposed to the six time steps in the standard surface code. So now we can see that these two types of codes indeed have a, a significant reduction of the um, frequency collisions. So uh, we can see that in order to have neighboring qubits have different frequencies, uh, we for these two types of codes, we only need three types of frequencies indi indicated by the colors. In other words, the two graphs are, are three colorable. So in contrast, the surf, uh, to implement the standard surface code, uh, you have to have five different frequencies. So we can also slightly modify the um, boundaries, uh, the vertices on boundary by merging three of them. Uh, the price is that you have to introduce the four different frequencies. So um, then we can do a numerical simulation of the mean number of frequency collisions for different types of codes. So here the black are the surface code and the uh, red are the heavy square code and the uh, blue and the purple are the two uh, versions of the uh, heavy hex code. So we can see that uh, um, for uh, for the same code distance, um, the surface code has significantly large uh, uh, frequency collisions than the heavy square and the heavy hex code. Uh, so by the way, this is plotting log logarithmic scale. So now uh, we talk about the uh, extra use of flag qubits. So uh, we know when there's a single fault uh, in the measurement circuit uh, occurred on the ancilla qubit, it can be propagated by the circuit uh, into a way two um, uh, errors on the data qubits. Um, so, so this is not good because it could potentially reduce the code, di code distance, uh, effective code distance. So uh, to resolve this problem, we, we have this um, flag qubit, so once this event happens, you can, the flag qubit measurement will be triggered by the errors, the Z error occur on the flag qubit. So from that information, you know uh, this event uh, has happened. Uh, so similarly, uh, for a different error location, the other um, flag qubit could be triggered. So now let's talk about uh, the decoding graph of uh, the, this um, type of code. So for the Z type of uh, syndromes, we have a decoding graph. The main part is similar to a surface code. So here the vertices uh, represent the, uh, the measurement qubit, which give you uh, uh, the syndromes of the errors. So in addition, you also have these green circles, which represent the flat qubits. And the solid edge are usually the standard edge, the same as the surface code, but it, one could have extra uh, cross edges related to the events that a single fault could essentially uh, trigger two um, and data qubit error. So, so this edge correspond to these events. So when a um, flat qubit is triggered, uh, so either on the right or the left, it means there could be a either a single fault leads to a two uh, way two errors. Or it could also happen that it only lead to a, a single qubit data, uh, data qubit error. So, so these two edges uh, are higher when the um, uh, flag qubits are triggered. So due to the shape, we call this edge the uh, inner uh, region, uh, boomerang region, just due to the shape. Uh, so, so now uh, while we uh, uh, have the de decoding graph, so, so in general, uh, the uh, measurement syndromes could be highlighted. Also, the flag qubits could be highlighted. And uh, in the case of uh, when there's measurement error and circuit level noise, 
one has to study a 3D version of a decoding graph where uh, extra uh, 3D edge has to be introduced. So the decoding protocol of uh, while using this flat cube is uh, pretty um, straightforward. Basically, we apply the standard minimum weight perfect matching on the decoding graph. Uh, with a, a, a change is that the edge uh, has to be renormalized, uh, conditioned by the um, information from the flag qubits. So one, their uh, total number of M flags are triggered. So in this uh, in these placates, uh, uh, when there are M of them, so we will have to renormalize the edge weight. So when, when you have edge inside the boomerang region, so we, we choose the weight to be minus log P, where P is at the order of a, a, a single error event, a single fault. Uh, however, when there's a, a for those edge outside the boomerang region, we have to renormalize them uh, in the way that we, we for the probability we times uh, multiplied by P to the M, where M uh, the total number of flags. So in this way, uh, you will have to uh, lower the probability and increase the weight of the edges outside the boomerang. So in that case, uh, the minimum weight perfect matching algorithm will figure out uh, a path that prefer to go through the boomerang uh, that taking into account of the fault triggered by that. So in the paper, we proved that uh, once you do that, you can, uh, you can actually preserve the full code distance of the code. So here is the numerical simulation of uh, the two types of code, heavy hex and heavy square codes uh, for both the X error and Z error. So uh, the heavy hex, uh, the X error part is just like the uh, surface code. So it has a threshold, which is more than half of the uh, standard surface code uh, under the same uh, depolarization noise model. Uh, so which is pretty good. Uh, on the Z error part, because it, it's bacon short nature, there's no error threshold, but the, the logical error rate is at the same order of the extra error rate. So, so in the uh, midterm, when the, the code distance is much below um, uh, 20, D equals 20, uh, so it behaves pretty good. Uh, so then for the heavy square code, we know that the uh, measurement circuit is uh, much, uh, has much longer depths. It's 40 uh, 14 times steps as opposed to six times steps in the standard surface code. However, due to the use of the flag information and the flag decoder scheme, we get a uh, error threshold is slightly just below the half of the standard surface code, which also suggests that this type of decoder is pretty uh, powerful. Now we go to the summary of this talk. Uh, that we, we have found new codes defined on a heavy hex and heavy square lattice, which can significantly reduce the frequency collision and the crosstalks. Um, and the heavy hex code is a hybridization of the uh, surface and bacon shell code. And uh, the introduction, uh, introduction of uh, flat um, qubits can preserve the full code distance uh, and significantly reduce the logical error rate. Um, also, the logical error rate and error threshold uh, both type of codes are quite competitive with the standard surface code, despite the much uh, longer depths of the measurement circuits. And uh, obviously the advantage is uh, in terms of the um, hardware implementation that they can uh, have a sig significant low crosstalk error and the fr frequency collision. Okay, so that's uh, 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 my talks. Thanks for your uh, attention.